Chapter 12 The Isle of Avalon Now what? Jack asked. Now, I thank you, said a deep voice. Merlin! cried Annie. Merlin stepped out of the shadows. He wore his red magician's cloak. His long white beard shined in the radiant glow of the sword. You brought the sword of light out of the gloom just in time, he said, before nightfall on the summer solstice. Why did we have to get it on the summer solstice, said Jack. That is the day when the power of the ice wizard of winter are weakest, said Merlin. The ice wizard of winter, said Annie. Does the sword belong to him? Did we just steal it from him? No, said Merlin. Long ago the ice wizard stole the sword from the Lady of the Lake and brought it to his kingdom high above the North Sea. Merlin pointed to the snow-capped mountains beyond the rocky coast. The wizard soon discovered that the Sword of Light was useless to him, for the Lady of the Lake had placed a spell upon it that made it powerful only in the hands of worthy mortals. Still, the wizard refused to part with it. He buried it at the bottom of the cove. The cove of the stormy coast, said Jack. Yes, said Merlin. Only recently did the seabirds tell me of the sword's whereabouts. I knew I needed worthy mortals to retrieve it, so I sent for you on the summer solstice when the ice wizard could send no mighty storms to keep you from finding it. He could only throw the cloak of the old gray ghost over you. So the ice wizard sent the fog, said Annie. And did he put the sea monster in the cove too? asked Jack. Merlin smiled. No, the serpent serves the lady of the lake. Long ago he secretly took it upon himself to find the sword and guard it. Should any mortal survive the winter storms and gales, they still had to prove themselves worthy by answering the serpent's question. I believed you two would be able to answer the question wisely, and I was right. Your rhyme helped, said Jack. He and Annie carefully handed the Sword of Light to Merlin. Will you put the sword in a stone now, said Annie, so Arthur can pull it out someday and become king? No, this sword is even more powerful than the sword in the stone, said Merlin. The sword has a name, Excalibur. Excalibur, said Jack and Annie. I will take it back to the island of Avalon now, said Merlin, and return it to the Lady of the Lake. Someday, after Arthur is king, she will give it to him. The sword will help him face many challenges, bravely and wisely. He will... Merlin was interrupted by a strange sound from the water below. It sounded like the deep bellow of Foghorn. What was that? said Jack. Ah, yes, there is one last thing to do, said Merlin. He raised the sword and pointed it toward the cove of the stormy coast. Like the beam of a giant searchlight, the sword's light streamed over the black waters. Merlin moved the beam back and forth as if he were looking for something. Ah, he said, there he is. The light revealed the gigantic head of the sea serpent. Its yellow lamp-like eyes shined back at them. He mourns now, said Merlin, for he has lost his purpose for being here. Tis time we help him home to the waters of Avalon. The magician lifted the sword slightly. The beam made a path to show the monster the passage out of the cove. The giant serpent slid through the water and soon disappeared beneath the waves of the dark summer sea. His mission is done now, said Annie. Yes, and so is yours, my friends, said Merlin. You must climb the ladder to your treehouse and go home. By the light of the sword, Jack and Annie found their way to the rope ladder and climbed up into the treehouse. When they looked out the window, they saw Merlin standing in the glow of the Sword of Light. Bye! Jack and Annie called. The magician raised his arm and spread his fingers in a wave of farewell. Merlin's gesture stirred something in Jack's memory, but he wasn't sure what it was. Let's go now, Annie said. Jack took the seashell out of his pocket. He pointed to the words Frog Creek. I wish we could go home, he said. Wait, said Annie, our shoes! We left them on the beach! Too late. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. A warm summer breeze wafted into the treehouse. The noon sun shined between the tree leaves. No time at all had passed in Frog Creek. Merlin was the water knight. Jack said. What? said Annie. When he said goodbye, Merlin gave us the same wave the water knight gave us, said Jack. Remember? Jack raised his hand and imitated Merlin's gesture. 
You're right, Annie laughed. Why didn't I think of that? He always helps us get started on our missions. And now we have three things from him, said Jack. He put the pale blue shell on the floor next to the royal invitation and the yellow autumn leaf. Then he looked at Annie. Home, he said. She nodded. They climbed down the rope ladder and started walking barefoot through the damp leafy woods. I guess we'll just have to tell Mom we lost her shoes in a time before Camelot, said Jack. Yeah, said Annie, on our way to get the sword of light that was stolen by the ice wizard of winter and guarded by a sea serpent who served the lady of the lake. Right, said Jack, a simple explanation. You ready to go swimming at the lake now? asked Annie. Jack remembered the thrill of being a seal and zooming through the deep waters. It won't be the same without Kathleen and Teddy, he said. We won't be seals. We can pretend, said Annie. Let's hurry before Mom decides it's too late to go. They took off running. They ran barefoot through the woods, over sticks and leaves, through the dappled noon light. Then they ran down their street. They were out of breath by the time they reached their yard. Oh, wow, said Annie. Look! She pointed at their porch. Sitting in front of the door were their sneakers. Jack and Annie climbed the porch and picked up their shoes. As Jack turned his over, fin fine white sand fell out and a couple of tiny silver pebbles. Who? How? he said. A seagull reached, screeched overhead. They looked up. The gull screeched again, then flew away and disappeared into the soft summer light. Annie shrugged. A little leftover magic, she said. Then she called through the screen door. Mom, we're ready!